Would you like to uh, settle into a nice, friendly neighborhood on your next vacation? Well, short-term vacation rentals, where people offer rooms in their homes to tourists, are on the rise. But there are some risks for both host and guest, as early show contributor Taryn Winterbrill found out. We haven't had the opportunity yet to watch TV together. It, we've been We're not big TV watchers, I guess. At first glance, these two might look like roommates or a couple. While they are in fact sleeping under the same roof, they only met two weeks ago. Have you ever boxed a kangaroo? No. Uh, negative, negative. Talon Actimir actually lives in Australia. She's on vacation in New York City. But rather than stay in a hotel... This is my room here. She's Very renting nice. out this spare bedroom in Seth Porges' Brooklyn condo, which she found on Airbnb, a short-term vacation rental website. For $90 a night, Tallinn gets a home away from home. So staying in a room like this, does it make you feel like you're in the comfort of your own bedroom? Absolutely, and it helps you to adjust to being in a different country almost immediately because it's like home. It's not a hotel room. You don't have you know, a hotel key or anything like that, so it's really nice. Another bonus, full use of the kitchen, including food items, free toiletries in the bathroom, access to a rooftop deck, and her own private balcony with a city view. But it's the neighborhood feel she enjoys most. I'm having the local experience, and that's what I was after. I didn't want to be a tourist. I did want to live like a local New Yorker. While Tallinn gets to live like a New Yorker, the major benefit for Seth is financial. When you rent out your room by the night, you can make a lot more money than renting out by the month. So being an Airbnb host can make a lot more money than if you're renting out the room to a roommate full time. Seth says his spare room is booked about 28 days out of the month, which adds up to more than $30,000 a year. With obvious benefits, Airbnb, a $1.3 billion company, is just one of many sites taking advantage of the short-term vacation rental market. But there's inherent risks. These sites don't do background checks. When you look at something like Craigslist, I think that people don't expect there to be protections there, so they do their own extra layer of vetting. That needs to exist for anybody doing a house rental. I would not entrust a company to do that vetting for me. I would want to do it myself. Airbnb was recently thrust into the spotlight after a woman blogged about a guest who burglarized her San Francisco apartment. She came home and her house was trashed and she immediately got on the phone, called Airbnb and didn't get the response that she wanted. Now they have completely step two and they're dealing with her and trying to make it right. After that story came out, a man in Oakland raised his hand and said, hey, actually, an incident happened to me as well. This one even gets creepier. The host says he unknowingly rented his apartment to a drug addict who trashed the place, took an ax to several doors and left behind more than one meth pipe. While Airbnb declined an on-camera statement, the company says it's rolling out new consumer protections and will cover up to $50,000 in damages and theft for hosts. I don't think there's any huge risk for the vacation rental market. I think it's hugely popular for very good reasons. I think the most important lesson to come out of this is buyer beware. And a representative from Airbnb told us these incidents, they are rare. The company plans to implement its $50,000 guarantee next Monday, and it has already unveiled a new trust and safety center.